Tonight, Alibaba sets a share price for the upcoming IPO, and it's a doozy. The Moto 360 smartwatch sells out. And what were the coolest products that came out of IFA? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 166 for Friday, September 5th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to 50-plus job boards with one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. In a regulatory filing today, Chinese, uh, China's largest e-commerce company, Alibaba Group, set the estimated price range of its initial public offering in the range of $60 to $66 a share, which values the company at a whopping $155 billion. Alibaba estimates the offering could raise up to $24.3 billion, which would be the biggest IPO in history. The Chinese e-commerce company is expected to launch the deal this month and plans to list under the symbol BABA or BABA on the New York Stock Exchange, with shares slated to start trading on September 19th. Now, last week, Alibaba reported a surge in revenue and earnings for its latest quarter in part from increased activity on mobile devices. Revenue jumped 46% to 15.77 billion yuan. Uh, that's that's 2.57 billion US dollars from a year earlier, while earnings surged to 12.34 billion yuan uh, from 4.38 billion. Now, Motorola announced today that it has sold out of its initial supply of Moto 360 watches available online. The company isn't saying how many of the devices it has sold but the $249 round Android Wear uh, smartwatch went on sale earlier today. The Moto 360 will also be available in all Best Buy retail stores by September 14th and is being sold on Best Buy's website as well as via the Google Play Store. Motorola has also said it will add additional carriers and retail partners later this year. In other Motorola news, the company has announced the new Moto X, a bigger version of its predecessor with a 5.2-inch AMOLED screen and a 1080p display instead of the previous 720p display. Instead of a plastic frame, Motorola went with aluminum wrapping around the entire edge of the phone. Plus, the Moto X now offers a back made with one of four different leathers, natural, cognac, black and navy. The X has a 13 megapixel camera, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor with a 2.5 gigahertz quad core CPU, a 578 megahertz Adreno 330 GPU and two gigs of RAM. Oh, and forget about OK Google as a voice prompt. You can also customize that voice command prompt to anything you want. The Moto X retails for $99.99 on contract or $499.99 unlocked. Now, the information reports anonymous Apple employees familiar with the so-called iWatch that say there are low expectations for the device's battery life. And even though it's sold out online, uh, even uh, poor battery life is one of the complaints about Motorola's new Moto 360 watch. We've been hearing about that all day, uh, which uses Google's new Android Wear OS. However... Rumors have suggested Apple's rumored iWatch will be the company's first device with OLED display technology, which can use considerably less power than traditional backlit LCD displays. The information's Jessica Lesson also said she expects the iWatch to boast voice-enabled controls, mobile payments, health monitoring, and most of the other features that have been rumored to be integrated into the device. Although next Tuesday's Apple event is widely believed to be an iPhone and possibly a wearable announcement, prominent Apple analyst Ming Chi Kuo of KGI Securities says he believes a so-called iPad Air 2 will also be unveiled by Apple next Tuesday. In a research note, Quo stead, uh, stated that only iPad Air 2 will see significant spec upgrades, which suggests the iPad mini may not be given as much of a spec bump. Specifically, Quo believes that the next iPad Air will have an anti-reflective screen coating, a full lamination touch panel, a new gold-colored casing, and a next-generation A8 processor. He also expects the device to adopt the Touch ID fingerprint sensor that debuted last year in the iPhone 5S. 
And in the wake of last weekend's iCloud privacy scandal, Apple has announced it plans to add additional steps to keep hackers out of user accounts while still denying that the breach was due to insufficient iCloud security. CEO Tim Cook said celebrities' iCloud accounts were compromised when hackers correctly answered security questions to obtain their passwords or when they were victimized by a phishing scam to obtain user IDs and passwords and that none of the Apple IDs and passwords leaked from the company's servers. Now, going forward, Apple will alert users via email and push notification when somebody tries to change an account password, restore iCloud data to a new device, or when a device logs into an account for the first time. Apple also says a majority of users don't use two-factor authentication, and it plans to more aggressively encourage people to turn it on in the new version of iOS. Now, coming up, do you know who authored the words on Microsoft's blue screen of death? We'll tell you all about that. And next, I'll talk with Brad Charkas uh, from PC World about the newest gear to come out of the IFA Electronics trade show. But first, are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. With ZipRecruiter.com, you post your job to 50-plus job sites, including Craigslist, LinkedIn, Twitter, all with a single click. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll in to ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. You quickly uh, screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. And for those of you looking for a job, ZipRecruiter helps you find a new employer as much as it helps a new employer find you. You can have the newest job posting sent to your inbox every day. This, of course, is great for employers as potential candidates will learn about your new postings quickly and you'll get the most motivated candidates this way. So find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses right now. Our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, welcoming to the show, Brad Charkas, a senior writer at P PC World, the IFA Consumer Electronics Trade Show, of course, underway now through September uh, 10th. And we're going to take a look at some of the best gadgets. How's it going, Brad? Hey, not bad. Glad to be here. Excellent. Thanks for having me. You bet. It's good to have you here. So you wrote an article earlier today, Best of IFA, the eye-catching new gear you need to see from dirt cheap PCs to smartwatches <laughs> galore. It's quite a title. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> you've helped oversee all the IFA news coverage for PC World and its sister sites, Greenbot and TechHive. So I guess let's start here. What, what exactly stood out to you? Well, one of the things I really love about IFA, as opposed to something like CES, where it's all prototypes and things that are far from the future, is uh, that at IFA, this is all stuff you're actually going to see this year for the holidays. This is the last big blowout. So a bunch of uh, the manufacturers save their, you know, their best stuff that they're going to have this holiday season. And they reveal it here. Uh, some things that stood out particularly for me, there's obviously the Galaxy Note 4, which is uh, just a beast of a phone inside and out. But... What I find more appealing about it, actually, is one of its accessories, the uh, Gear VR, a wire-free uh, wire mobile VR headset that actually you slot the Galaxy Note into its visor, and it actually functions as the screen and the brains for the thing. It's, uh, you know, I'm shocked to see the first commercial VR headset come out of Samsung. Uh, I didn't expect that, uh, but it looks really, really interesting. A um, couple other things that stood out for me is the, you know, sheer amount of smartwatches and smart bands on display. Pretty much everybody out there has a smartwatch now. But uh, one thing that's really appealing to me is we're start finally starting to see some of the round Android Wear smartwatches, some of the slightly more attractive designs. The initial, uh, the initial batch was all, you know, plastic square chunks, metal square chunks. But at IFA, the Asus had the Zen Watch which had like a nice leather strap. Uh, LG showed off the gear round, the G round R, pardon me, too many, you know, initials <laughs> in there, <laughs> too many letters. Yep. Uh, and that looks really good too. And Moto, uh, Motorola obviously threw off, showed off the Moto 360, which is another good watch. And I'm just excited to see all these smartwatches coming out. Still not sure they're a killer use case, but I'm excited to see it starting to become more attractive. 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously wearables, you know, as far as trends are concerned right now, the wearables is kind of at the top of that list. I mean, as you say, so many companies are coming out with their own approach with wearables. And of course, Apple's expected to do that next uh, next week, as we talked about a little bit earlier in the show. Are there any other trends that you're seeing kind of emerge right now? Or is, are, are we in the in the, the days of the wearable and everything else is kind of uh, taking a backseat to that until that becomes a little more mature? Well, wearables are definitely, you know, one of the stars of the show, quite literally, at this. Um, but there were a few other trends out there that are worth noticing. Um, one, I guess the era of the small smartphone is over because even the compact and mini phone these days are five inches. Mm -hmm. um, another one that's really interesting is that Microsoft finally has boots on the ground in the price war against Chromebooks and Android. They've been gearing up for it for months, reducing Windows 8.1 system specs and introducing a license-free version of Windows for uh, PCs, tablets, and smartphones. And at IFA, we actually saw a slew of Windows tablets uh, priced at 200 bucks and under. One's actually expected, the Toshiba Encore Mini, is expected to hit the streets with the price of 99 bucks, even though the MSRP is, you know, 120 bucks. And that's always been Android territory. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also a whole bunch of $200 uh, lap, uh, little laptops coming out uh, to counter the Chromebook threat. And it's just really interesting to see what's going to happen now that Microsoft and Google are playing on an evil price playing field. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and then finally... What about sleeper hits? You know, we we've heard obviously, you know, the, the big the big news around, around Samsung's uh, technologies that they introduced, Motorola, of course, a few of the other companies. What are some of the things that kind of slid under the radar a little bit, maybe that uh, that some that didn't get as much attention? Would you say? Um. Well, one product that really stood out for me that I'm really intrigued by. I'm not sure if it'll sell a tremendous amount, but uh, I think it has the chance to is the Sony Xperia Z3. Sony's phones have always been really attractive and really well built, but they haven't been carried by carriers much here in the US. Uh, this particular phone, T-Mobile has already announced support for it. Um, it's been rumored that Verizon's also gonna carry it. Um, yesterday, I believe you were talking about how it said that Sprint is also gonna carry a version of it. Uh, and it's a really well built phone continuing the footsteps of its predecessor. And importantly to me, it enables PlayStation 4's uh, remote play. So you can play your PlayStation 4 games on your phone. And I think that's a really interesting, really cool feature for the Xperia line now that the PlayStation 4 is doing so well on the market. Yeah, I mean, in, in the mobile world, Sony definitely has its Uber fans. And here in the States, you know, I, I think we're starting to realize kind of where that comes from, you know, as far as Sony in the, in the mobile space. We haven't seen a whole lot aside from a few tablets here and there. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see where where Sony kind of lands in the, in the mobile race, at least here in the States, because their hardware is always pretty great. The, their software yeah. sometimes leaves a little to be desired, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm interested... I'm interested to see how it does now that it has some carrier support, it looks like, which it hasn't really had before. Right. I'm sure it'll do great. Uh, well, Brad Sharkis, senior writer at PC World, really appreciate you coming on the show and talking to us today about everything you saw at IFA. Anytime. Glad to be here, Jason. Right on. Um, where can people follow your work online? Uh, most often at PCWorld.com and on the tablet edition of PC World Magazine, which can be found for Android, iPad, Kindle, so on and so forth. Excellent. All right, everybody, look for Brad online. Thank you so much. We'll have you back soon. See you. All right, take care. All right, finally, where were you the first time you experienced the blue screen of death? Every Windows user knows what it is, but who made that horrible screen anyway? According to a blog post on MSDN, it was none other than former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer while he was leading the systems division. As the story goes, Ballmer was showed an original error message by the Windows team and Ballmer reportedly said he didn't like the text and so he rewrote the message himself. All legacy, that Ballmer, all legacy. There it is, it's just, it's a sight to behold. Do we miss it? I don't think I miss it very much. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can always subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. And of course, you can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's it for this week. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you for watching.
Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.